story about a ceremony. It is a secret that you will learn about, but will not learn. The secret knowledge is only for those who have walked before. This is a story of magic. As the world begins to tilt back each year, in a time of ceremonial dance, a man from the Karuk tribe leaps from a rock into a creek mouth near the base of Black Mountain. As he crashes into the water, the sound from the collision echoes like thunder and summons lightning to strike the nearby forest. The rippling waves travel down the river to the Pacific Ocean, calling the salmon home. The prayers carried by these waves summon the salmon to return to their ancestral forest where they hatch. This ceremony is thousands of years old and has beckoned millions of salmon that are crucial to the health of the forest. The indigenous knowledge, practice, and belief systems represented here have been belittled, dismissed, and made mockery of for far too long. This is a story of science. In early fall of each year, a man from the Karuk tribe leaps from a rock into a creek mouth near the base of Black Mountain. Now this is a sacrifice because it is painful. The louder the collision, the bigger the ripple, the further the sound carries, you see. Miles away on this signal, the fire experts in the forest light their controlled burns. Their good fire is ignited as lightning would do when thunderclaps. Throughout the year, the trees in the area draw water from deep in the earth at night, bringing it up to the surface for them to use in the daytime hours. This process is called hydraulic redistribution. These fires burn off the small plants that consume much of the water, creating a water surplus at the surface. The smoke from these fires causes a thin layer of carbon that covers the leaves of the trees, clogging them and reducing their photosynthetic output for a brief period. This reduces the tree's use of water, increasing the surplus. The smoke also creates an inversion layer over the stream, cooling down the air and the water and slowing evaporation. All of this water surplus, the runoff from the trees and the excess water in the soil, flow from the forest to the river, changing the diurnal flow from day to day, creating a pulse. A pulse of the river, a ripple, a series of waves as the days grow shorter and nighttime air temperatures cool. When this pulse reaches the river mouth, it displaces any sandbar in its path that has clogged the entry point for salmon. Sandbars cannot be disrupted by consistent flow alone, so this pulse is necessary to open the rivers for the salmon to begin their journey back to their spawning grounds. The water is no longer too hot for salmon to enter the river, and the extra flow is reinforced by wildland fires, lightning storms, and fall rains.